Welcome back boys and girls. Today, I'm gonna show you how you can test internationalization in your ASP.NET Core application. Take this scenario for example. You're a company building an application and you want that application to be available in multiple regions. The two regions that we're gonna take is for example, USA and India. These countries have different perspectives on how much stuff is worth and people have different salaries. So for example, if you have a service selling for a hundred bucks in America, that may seem reasonable, but if you sell it for a hundred bucks in India, that is way, way too expensive and very little people can actually afford that. So what you want to do is actually display a lower price in India so people actually do buy your product instead of avoiding it altogether. In this video, we're actually going to be testing whether not only are we displaying the correct language based on location, not just browser settings. That is a big mistake that you can make that purely just because somebody's browser is set to being in Indian, Spanish, English, American language, you're going to determine their location or the service that you should present to them that way. The problem with that is you can have a person from India travel to America and have their laptop in Indian or in Hindi, then access your service and you will think that they're still in India. So the resolution for the price of your service shouldn't really be the same as the language for your service. So let's say you build your app, you are resolving your locations based on IP address. All good. How do you actually test this? How do you actually verify it? Can you make this verification process automated? This video is going to answer those questions and the solution for answering those questions is going to be using proxies provided by today's sponsor, Bright Data. Bright Data is one of the leading proxy and data collection providers with over 100 million IPs worldwide. Their solutions range from proxies to web scraping tools, web unblocker and ready to use datasets. They are trusted by companies big and small for a variety of use cases that you can read more about on their website. And as you will see, they're very easy to integrate with. And with that, before we jump into the video, all of the information that you're going to need is going to be in the description, links to source code and bright data. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. If you're enjoying the video, leave a like and subscribe. With that, let's go ahead and get started with an example a live example of uh, localization done right. So here is Udemy. I'm currently located in United Kingdom and the price for this course over here is 11 pounds effectively. Now what I'm gonna use is Bright Data's extension, Chrome extension to connect to a proxy. Here I have a choice between a data center and a residential proxy. And before I actually connect to them, let's go ahead and explain how I've set these up. Once you obtain a Bright Data account, you have access to their dashboard. Here you can see I've already set up a data center and a residential proxy. Just so you're aware, data center is sitting in a data center. It looks like a computer is making these requests. Residential is a software sitting in people's houses. So it looks like a person is making this request. If you're making requests from a data center, perhaps you are going to get blocked because of bot detection. And by the way, there is a usage limit over here, so you can set these so you don't bankrupt yourself. In terms of how easy is it to set up these, you click get started somewhere over here for one of these options and you click add, chances are you're gonna be good with the defaults. So let's take a look at the data center proxy. Just a note here, I have set it up with Great Britain, Spain and India. For the residential proxy, I didn't need to do anything. I basically get the option of choosing the country at the time of making a request. With that information that I have set up these two proxies and now they're available from this Chrome extension. First of all, I'm gonna take the data center and I'm gonna to try to access this from Spain. The proxy is on, let's go ahead and refresh this page. Here we're gonna see a price in euros. We're then going to switch to India. I'm gonna refresh this and the site cannot be reached. So error tunnel connection failed. Again, I am using the data center zone. So it looks like a computer from India is making this request from a data center in India. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to say, okay, let me try to make this request as if I'm a person from India. Okay. So let's choose the country over here, go to Udemy and refresh. And after a little bit of loading, we see the results. So through the residential Indian proxy, we were able to reach Udemy and get the relevant price for our location. You can use the same approach using the Chrome extension to test localization manually for your websites 
or you can access their proxies through curl requests, HTTP clients and test them programmatically. Testing them programmatically means you can automate this process and that is what the rest of the video is going to be about. Coming back to the other browser, here I have a sample application that I have already deployed and there are three main endpoints that we need to be aware of. The first one is just returning hello world and I can change the culture to be Spanish. So then it's going to return hello mundo. Then the second page is products. So here we have a couple of cards, just a little bit of UI to display products without images and the point of interest is the price. So again, I'm going to change the culture manually over here. Again, we actually wanted to change depending on location, but this is just to highlight what kind of change this is going to be. So we have 25 euros and 33 euros. Otherwise, it's 20 pounds and 30 pounds. And then for the third page, it's the same. But instead of HTML, you have adjacent payload, which for engineers that are dealing with APIs, which I'm hoping is going to be most of you, it's going to be a lot easier to take this payload and parse this uh, value and make sure that it's correct. OK, so if we place Spanish culture over here, the price is going to change. So here we have our three pages. Now, the main question is, how do we make a request from a region or make it seem like we're making a request from there? And then how do we actually detect that region? Well, the detection, we do it based on IP, the code I, that I will show you for that in just a bit. And then making a request from a location. Well, we already know we're going to be using bright data for it. So how do you actually use it? Good question. We are going to go ahead and open one of the zones. So for example, we're going to go to data center and then we're going to go to access parameters. On the left hand side, you have the information of the host where you should be making this request and then the basic authentication for that request. On the right, right hand side, you have a curl request that you can copy. Now everything is going to be blurred. So in order to make this experience a little bit better, I have gone ahead, copied the username and password into my environment variables of the terminal and I'm just templating them in like this. So using curl through the proxy, I'm making a request to loom test to just check my IP address. And if I execute this request, it's going to go from Spain. If I do it again from Great Britain, if I do it again, I just want to see India pop up one time because I have that zone in there as well. At the fear of perhaps sitting here for a long time, I'm going to stop that. But anyway, we're ping ponging between Spain and Great Britain. We don't want our tests randomly making requests from either Spain or Great Britain. We want to say make a request from Spain. In order to do that, we specify one of the cities that we have selected on the username. So on the end of the username, we say dash country and dash yes. So all of these requests should be going out from Spain. And maybe this will be a little bit better if I clear the console. So again, here is a country ES appended to the username. If I execute this, it's going to go from Spain, 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 Spain. If I clear this again and I change this to GB, we're going to see the requests going out from Great Britain. And the same is going to be true for your residential proxy. You just put your username, append what region you want the request to go out from, and that is pretty much it. So clearing the console, I want to execute another request against my website, not loom test and actually just see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to go over here, I'm going to grab my website, come back to the terminal, remove loom test and put my website, enter. And the result is going to be hello world for making requests from Great Britain. If I put yes, the result is still going to be hello world. I'm not actually resolving based on location yet. However, there is a mechanism in there to resolve based on location. So let me go ahead and show you how that is done. So here I have the source code for my application. As you know it, everything starts in program CS. Here we're registering our services. The first one is the loom test client. This is to resolve the incoming requests IP address. Again, the source code is available. Please check the description. Here we're registering the localization services where I have the resources over here. And the resources are super simple where we just have one key, hello world, and then hello world and hola mundo for English and Spanish. Okay, so closing that off, this also then registers the supported cultures and additional services as well as the loom test location provider. This is something that's going to resolve a culture based on the location using the loom test client. We're going to take a look at both of these components in just a second. 
Otherwise, for the three pages that we have over here, before we execute any of them, we have the use request localization middleware triggered, where the culture provider will run in order to set the culture for the request. Having a quick look at the endpoints, the first one uses the iString localizer to just return the value. Then for the product's endpoint, this is to return a list of products. So on the product's endpoint is where I have the database defined. So perhaps before taking a look at how the products are getting templated into some HTML over here, we're going to take a look at the products database, which is just a static list. Obviously, you can replace this with Entity Framework Core. But the important thing here is that for a product, I'm maintaining two sets of prices. And depending on which culture is currently selected, I'm going to select that appropriate price. All right. So quickly for the data model, I have the product the product price where I'm storing a symbol and the value of the product, and then the final projection, which is going to be the actual value that I return from the API. Okay. So for the endpoint, based on the ID, if I don't select it, select a product based on the ID, we then get the culture and based on the culture, we fetch the correct price. And then we construct the projection. Similar thing is happening in the product's endpoint where I'm getting all of the products. I am converting them to this tuple with the product and the product price. The product price resolution is exactly the same. Again, if you're using Entity Framework Core, it's going to be a one to many relationship. And this query is actually going to be a lot easier for you than it is for me here. And then finally, I'm constructing an HTML document using a library called Hypertext Expression. It's right below over here. Over here, I have the product prices. I am selecting them into divs, which are then rendered into products. The CSS for this looks like this, or sorry, the HTML looks for this like this. I have to do a little bit of manual mapping for these symbols over here. And then just to make sure that we're aware at the top, I'm using Bulma for the CSS styles in order to get these uh, pretty cards over here. So that's pretty much the entirety of the endpoints. Now for the juice, the loom test client and the loom test location provider. We're going to start off with the loom test location provider. As the request is being executed, we're going to trigger the use request localization middleware. This is going to eventually end up in the loom test location provider. We have access to the HTTP context. And here I have a flag. If I set check IP to true, this logic is going to execute. Otherwise, I'm going to return null and whatever default uh, providers they have for culture resolution, those are going to be used. So if I actually want to go back to the terminal and when I'm making a request from Spain and I want it to apply the Spanish culture, I actually have to trigger check IP and actually don't need the value on there because it is a Boolean flag. At this point, I'm going to get hello mundo instead and hopefully goes without saying if I go back to Great Britain, this is going to give me hello world. All right. So in reality, when you are building this application, you just don't need this flag. However, you choose to resolve the IP address, you have to somehow store it against the user session or resolve it every single time that is going to put a little bit of latency on your requests. But again, if you track it against the user session, you're going to be good. So if check IP is present, we get the IP address of the incoming request, we then get the loom test client. Using the loom test client, we get the information about the IP address and the IP information over here really just includes the country for where the request is coming from. And I take the country and I set it on the provider culture result. Then in the product endpoint and the product endpoint, we can use the get culture result, which is an extension function to get the culture that is currently set on the request this way. And again, this value is set by this provider during middleware execution over here. So. If I'm doing this test manually, I would take my bright data extension, I would pick the residential zone, sure, I would go to let's say, Spain, there it is, once I'm connected, refresh the page, and the prices don't change. Why? Because we need the check IP flag. So if we have the check IP flag over here, it's going to resolve prices based on my location. So if I go ahead and turn off the proxy, and refresh the page, now again, I'm getting British prices. So in short, you can use the Chrome extension to test your website manually. And you can use curl requests or HTTP requests to test your website programmatically. And speaking of testing it programmatically, that is what the second project is here. If we expand it, we have a proxy client factory over here, which I'm going to populate 
with my credentials in just a second and then close this and we're gonna see some tests run. Now, before I run this, if you didn't know, .NET 8 actually supports HTTPS proxies. So you can put HTTPS in your proxy over here and you're protected against uh, man in the middle attacks. Otherwise, if you're on below .NET 8, you will have to go to certificate validation something. So this big ass name over here, and then you're gonna have a bunch of parameters over here and you're just gonna have to return true from this Lambda, effectively disabling certificate validation. And that's gonna go the same if you're gonna make requests via an HTTP proxy to HTTPS websites. So with that out of the way, let me go ahead and populate this with credentials. I have updated the proxy client factory. Let's open up the localization test. And here we're using the proxy client factory as a class fixture that is getting injected. And inside of our tests based on the country, so for Great Britain or for Spain, we're gonna take that country and create a client for it. We're then gonna make a request and expect the result to be either hello world or hola mundo. And then we're gonna do the same for when we're testing products. Here specifically, I'm just testing the individual product that is returned in JSON format from the API. So I can just deserialize it. If I have HTML, I'm gonna have to involve some kind of HTML parsing, get the correct element and check the contents of that element. HTML is a little bit more work. Most of us build JSON APIs these days anyway. So this is what you're gonna see most of the time. Let's go ahead and run the test, see what happens. And there we have it, all tests are passing. Now, because this is a unit test suite, you can go ahead, open it at the terminal. And as long as you can run .NET test, you can take this test suite, put it into your build pipeline, run it on a schedule, just executing this command in the same location as this project exists. So if this is running on a schedule or as you're deploying this to your staging environment, you can trigger this test against your staging environment and you're gonna get some kind of verification whether your localization mechanism still working or not. And by the way, running these automated tests against production is pretty valuable as well. That is pretty much it for my demonstration of how you can use bright data proxies in order to test the localization of your ASP.NET Core applications. And by the way, testing localization of your websites is not the only thing that is possible thanks to Bright Data's proxy network. Some of the other things that you can do is if you're serving advertisements, you can check what kind of advertisements, to whom are you serving. If you're selling some kind of product, perhaps you wanna do a little bit of market research. What prices are your competitors displaying in different regions, different locations? This goes hand in hand with e-commerce, kind of the scenario that we covered over there. Or perhaps you need to check if your website ranks on ECO at all in specific locations. So thems are some additional use cases that are possible thanks to Bright Data. Make sure you check the description, visit their website and check them out. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section and thank you for watching and have a good day.